All right, what's going on everyone? It's Abdallah here with a very special live stream of the awesome animated short. Wow, for Star Fox Zero, the battle begins. This is gonna be really fun. Now, Star Fox Zero has really taken over my life for the past couple weeks. Shout out to Nintendo of America for providing me with the early copy. I've been playing the game nonstop and it is super fun. It's the Star Fox, that's Star Fox that we've all been waiting for since the N64 version. It is so true to the original, it's not even funny. So, without further ado, thank you guys so much for coming to this live stream. Uh, the live stream is actually going to get started up in the next couple of seconds. So, we've got a little bit of time to chat. Now, uh, a lot of you guys in the comment section were talking about Star Fox. We're throwing some cool Star Fox quotes here and there. Um, but, what I really want to talk about is my video series that I'm going to be doing for Star Fox Zero. Now, a long time ago, literally I want to say like four years ago, I took up on a project called Star Fox 64 Choose Your Own Adventure. Some of you guys may know it. There may or may not be a link in the description for it. But ultimately with that, I, I guided the viewers through annotations and links in the description to various parts of Star Fox 64. Now, I'm taking that concept and doing it with Star Fox Zero. So with my series that's going to come out right on 422, you guys are going to have all the uploads ready to go. So you start in Corneria, and then you can choose at the end of the episode which path you want to take. And I've got over 35 videos in the playlist. It's awesome. It's going to be so good. I haven't really talked too much about it. It's kind of been hush-hush until Embargo uh, releases. So it's going to be really fun. So I really want you guys to check that out. The link is actually in the description that you guys can click on the playlist. But, of course, it's going to be private until the Embargo lifts on 422. So I'm pretty excited for it. I've literally done everything there is to do. All the paths unlocked. Ooh, man, it's going to be really fun. So I can't wait. It's going to be really exciting. The game is so good. Make sure that you guys click on the link in the description to purchase the game from Amazon so you guys can get it on release day or shortly thereafter, and you guys can play along with me. There's a lot of really cool high scores that you can get in the game as far as hits on certain levels or beating levels within certain times. I think that that is one of the coolest things about Star Fox Zero is that you can locally compete with some other people. So... Star Fox Zero is huge. Of course, Star Fox Guard, I'll be playing that game right alongside with it. So here we go. Looks like we're starting up. All right, Star Fox Zero, the battle begins. All right, now this is source quality from Nintendo's YouTube, or from Nintendo's channel this is a man consumed by vengeance and this is the man responsible for his exile general pepper That's so cool because how this is designed is exactly how it looks like in the game. Nice! That's like 3D right there! It's like 2D and 3D, that's awesome! Fox McCloud. My father passed away five years ago. To carry on his legacy, I brought his team out of retirement. Star Fox, the elite squadron he founded and died to protect. I've recruited the best teammates a squad leader could ask for. Like a brilliant young inventor and close friend from my academy days, Slippy Toad. And Falco Lombardi, a hotshot flyboy who's kind of a handful. 
but also one of the best pilots I've ever met. Star Fox, <laughs> Super Nintendo, that's awesome. Ah, dang it. Ah. Yep, like I said, the best teammates a squad leader could ask for. Having a tough time there? Huh? <laughs> hey, what are you? <gasps> Hold still. It's ah, just cut it out. Get your hands off of me. Oh, come on, just try it. I'm bored. It has been ten whole days since we left Soria, you know. I'm getting huh. so sick of the canned food. Huh? Soria. There we go. There's a reference. So, guys, what should we eat first when we mm -hmm. get to Corneria? Well, where do you want to go? I was thinking here. Hey! Ugh. This is not a vacation! And that's Peppy Hare. My father's old wingman. A seasoned pro. The glue that holds the team together. And just look at this mess. Were you boys raised in a barn? <laughs> Who's playing with blocks? That music. Right. And no yelling. And which one of you boys messed with my desk? Oh, let's go to this restaurant at the new water park and eat some crab. You three uh, down. Hmm. Ah. Hey, what's that? It's a good luck charm made out of General Pepper's fur as a symbol of our friendship. Out of his fur? Nothing weird there. <laughs> Seriously, guys. The Cornerian army and Andros's forces have been at war for years now, and here you are always joking around. Because there's nothing to worry about. Corneria's defenses are totally impenetrable. There's no way Andros could think he stands a chance of actually breaking through them. Huh? Rob, report. Distress signal received. Communications open. Starfox, come in. Do you read me? General Pepper. Rob? What's going on? Corneria City is under attack from Andros's army. <gasps> what is that thing? No, it can't be. That's exactly like it is in Corneria, the first mission of the game. That's so awesome. This mean he actually dared to rebuild it? General, what's your status? Please respond. I don't get it. I mean, seriously, why aren't they attacking the tower? They caught the Cornarian army completely by surprise. Why not blow it to pieces while they still have the advantage? Good point. These invaders, what they want is me. What do you mean? The Great Fox has entered Corneria's orbit. Star Fox, move out! <laughs> <laughs> Little bouncing sound effect. Man, I was really looking forward to this trip, too! Jeez, how'd these creeps even get through the city's defenses? Teleportation! Huh? They used a teleportation device! How could Andros even have a thing like that? We can worry about that later. Right now, we've just got to get those things away from the general. Well, the way those robots are homing in on him suggests they're equipped with advanced bio-tracking tech. So, what's your point? Well, if we had some way to erase his life signs, then... We want to save him, not off him, you crazy tadpole. Hey! <laughs> Wait! Hold up! Oh. All hands evacuate! Get everyone out of the tower! The general, what about you, sir? Get out now! That's an order! Hurry! Does Peppy have to go to the bathroom right before every mission? <sighs> oh, sorry about that, guys! Took you long enough. <laughs> what? That's awesome! Let's go! That's cool. Now we have insight as to how they get into their R wings. They just drop on in. <laughs> Slippy just misses. Hey guys, put on your new visors, okay? <laughs> it's game time, huh? That's so cool. 
totally rock and rolling. And it said good luck on there. Did you guys see that? That's awesome. Good luck. Dude, that's so cool. The little references. Check your G diffuser system. I'm fine. I'm okay. All systems go. I'm taking you all down. Look at that too. He must have hyper lasers. Ha, this new visor is not too shabby. Rob, how's the evac going? Relocation of civilians complete. The tower's being overwhelmed. Looks like someone kicked over an ant's nest. Switching to all range mode. You're mine. Incoming from behind. That's so cool. <laughs> Use your brain. Hey, Fox, it's ready to go. Copy that. Let's go. Come on, I swear if they if Peppy doesn't say do a barrel roll. Did we get them all? Not yet. General Pepper. I need you to take cover in a sealed room right away. A sealed room? There's no time to explain. Please hurry. Cleaning in progress. Cleaning in progress. <laughs> That's perfect. I was wondering what that thing was doing besides cleaning up. Now it's my turn. To the blast? It's my latest invention. Slip used fur from my lucky charm to make missiles that mimic Pepper's lap signs. Pretty cool for something I just slapped together, right? Fox, now's our chance. All right. All Wait, Peppy Hair now. spelled H A I R. Wait, I don't. Mm, I don't know about that. I thought it was H A R E. Someone, someone let me know. Dare you interfere with my mission? I'll squash you like the insects you are. So, that's the boss man, huh? Slip and DeRosa. Falco, you're with me. We've got to take down that ship. Dude, this is so awesome. And DeRosa, use Hyper Beam. It's not very effective. Think that did it? Hey, Froggy! Heading down below. That's so awesome. We're not going to fall that easily. If you want to catch me, you have to try harder than that. <laughs> oh man, Falco is so good. Curse you, Star Fox! When Andros hears about this, you're through. You hear me? And he's out of here. <laughs> yes. We're glad you're safe, General. Starbox, we are once more in your debt. So you're sure you're all right? <laughs> Thanks to you. I hate to ask more of you so soon, but I need you to fly out to Sector Alpha. Expecting more trouble out there? We've received an urgent call for reinforcements, and we could use you on the front lines. Understood. We're on it. Oh, what about my crab? 
Guess there's no rest for the best. No rest for the best. That's right. Falco says that. All units, report. I'm fine. All peachy for me. This transmission is only for you. You know what this attack means. That Andros has dared to rebuild that device. Yes. I know I can trust you to do what must be done and keep this quiet. Your teammates must not learn the truth. I understand. So, Fox McLeod, eh? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That was awesome! That was awesome! Holy cow! And then here's actual gameplay footage from the game. Corneria was so, like, true to the exact game. You have no idea. It was so awesome. That was really well done. Oh, man. You know what? You know what we should do if... We need to tell Nintendo that we want more of these. That was so good! Give me, like, a... Like a 10 part series with like, or like, I don't know, like 15 part series where he goes to like every single level. And then, that's it. That's all I want. Is that too much to ask for? You can give me one episode every week. I'll give you a week to do it. That's so good. All right, guys. If you enjoyed that, smash that like button right now, guys. That was so good. You know, we want to show Nintendo that this is exactly what we want. We love the Star Fox universe getting all of the characters in there and just observing how they're acting rather than just like hearing a little quote here and there. That's so awesome. Oh man, shout out to Nintendo for that. That was really good. Available April 22nd and it comes with Star Fox Guard. Hey everybody, welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I'm Sam, joined by my colleagues JC and Tade. And what you just watched was the world premiere of the Star Fox Zero animated short. But please don't go anywhere because we've got more stuff to show you. We're going to jump into some Star Fox Zero play right off the bat and then do some Star Fox Guard as well. We should just jump right on yeah, in. Yeah, I'll just I'll start playing. Oh, man. Dude. That's good. He's got the little Star Fox plushie. You know, I have that downstairs. I should go get that. This is, this is pretty awesome. I have to say, I was not expecting it to be like that. And I saw it and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm so glad we can talk about it now because it's been a really hard secret to keep for a while now that we were it's, it's been so cool seeing how it came together. Um, folks who are, who are watching, who may have been following uh, Miyamoto-san, worked really closely with Production IG and with Studios on that animated short. And uh, anybody who's watching who's an anime fan is probably familiar with those companies. They, they've done some pretty incredible work. And uh, it's really amazing that they were able to help us out with that short. That was really good. The, the anime short was so well done. Although, I didn't know, for, for example, I, I was not aware that Cordelia had uh, that many dogs, and I was like swooning every time. I was, oh my gosh, <laughs> the amount of dogs in Corneria. I'll be honest, I, I think it makes the drama harder for me that it's a city full of dogs. <laughs> it's just like, oh, they're, they're so that was good, that was good. Um, shout out to Smiley D for coming on board. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'll message you after the uh, stream. Uh, right now, so we're kind of revisiting everything that you know you guys saw in the little animated short. So, kind of diving in and out of the, the uh, tower, uh, tower and stuff. And if you take a look at even like the bridge and the models and everything, it's exactly the same. Like, even the attention. Right, that's what I was talking about. Like really? Corneria was so well portrayed in the cartoon. Yeah, there's the uh, the area where all oh, yeah. the folks are hiding out waiting so for the battle to finish. So they're all over there in this area and probably over there too. I see a lot of like skyline and city and stuff. <laughs> As he shoots towards them. <laughs> Good job, JC. an alternate path and some other tucked away stuff that we haven't really looked at too closely. But if you rewatch the animated short, there's um, an overview of this area and you can actually see where that path is and how it comes in. So I'm hoping people will give that a rewatch after they have a chance to play the game because there's a lot of stuff you'll see in there that'll uh, really catch your memory when you're playing the game. But uh, for folks who haven't seen too much Star Fox Zero yet, we probably should talk a little bit about what you're doing and the control scheme and all the basics before we get into too much else. Exactly. So if this is the first time you're watching you know, Star Fox Zero and you haven't seen too much of it, here's what I'm doing. So I'm Fox McCloud. I'm flying in this R-Wing, which is super, super awesome. Uh, and, uh, and I'm looking at the TV. 
and what I'm doing is I'm getting a context of my ship. So this is the context of what I can see behind the ship, or focus on other important elements that are going on like that. Um, and on the gamepad screen eventually, you'll start seeing that I can actually see... That's good! Gamepad capture right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's really so the, words, the best part of Star Fox Zero. Hands down, it's all about the gamepad. Okay, there's things I need to shoot here. Let me just turn back around so I can show you guys. Say this. I'm trying to shoot at this thing. Oh, I can't see it. But if you look at using, you know, the gamepad, I can totally see that back there. Or, like, see down and away. So I can essentially fly and shoot in two different directions at once. And to say that, you know, this is a skill that must be developed, absolutely. I mean, you know, you want to be an ace pilot, you got to train up your skills, and that's kind of what it is. So. That's true, you got to get good. <laughs> so, Ooh, the yeah. game was so but fun to play. I know, it's, even for me, I mean, when I first started playing, I was like, oh, I, I've, I've played practically every Star Fox. I've beaten every Star Fox. But I'd take a step back and be like, you know what, I know I know Cranaria, I'm, I'm aware of how the game works. But I didn't know how it feels, and when you start playing it, it feels different. But the moment you realize it feels different, it feels... Honestly, it feels better to me. I feel like I have way more control. I have a lot more accuracy when I'm looking down at the gamepad. Like, I can fly over these enemies, look down at the gamepad. It's so good. No problem. It is it so good. I'm telling you guys. Like, kind of down having down the, the Wii U gamepad so, again, and, like, there, aiming? I, I can't oh, man. It's really immersive when you, when you get a hang of it. You really get, get it's literally the best integration of Wii U gamepad on the entire Wii U right now. I can say that hands down. And it feels so natural too, trust me. Like there's a lot of criticism out there about the Wii U gamepad and like motion control. But it's perfect. It is so perfect. After you play one mission, you're like, okay, got it. Done. Uh, there it is. No wonder I'll do this. I'll do one giant pass on the So uh, just to let folks know later on in the stream here, we I think we're gonna be showing off some boss battles and some alternate pathways yes. and some amiibo functionality. So there'll be uh, a bunch of different stuff coming out shortly, but right now we just gotta clear these guys out so we can yeah, this will be quick. do all the last one. There you go. Let's just make this a little bigger. Okay, you should be it. Okay, nice. Phase two. Sweet. Let's get to the boss. Oh, it's so good. That is pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to uh, a couple days now when these games go on sale because I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how long it takes people to get perfect scores. Perfect scores. That is. That is something, you know, it does, you know, speaking of, like, skill, like, I remember, I've played this level a lot of times, but I'm always figuring out different ways I can actually go through the level to pick out, like, the best spots where I can, like, find, like, okay, this is where a group of three appears, this is how I can break and look to my right, and I know I have, you know, I'm kind of exposing myself to as many... That's true. Possible. That is very true. In this game, so. And yes. this, of course, very Ooh, familiar boss for folks familiar. who just watched this short with us. That's right, and I will, I am definitely looking at the TV... And I am, you know, to kind of check out in relation, where is my ship? Where am I supposed to turn? And now that I know that that's I've played this boss so many times. It's so cool. And Rosa. It's just so fun, like, swooping in exactly like JC's doing right now. Swooping in, aiming for the two top cannons. It feels so good. So I encourage folks to experiment with this a bit once they get in there and start playing. I uh, can definitely see what you mean as far as having the multiple views being really handy here. Uh, this is a game, of course, that we worked with alongside Platinum Games, and anybody who's played a Platinum game knows that they're masters of the giant boss that you have to maneuver around, a big, stompy enemy. That's right. Platinum so Games is, like, one of the best developers out there. They did awesome work. And the boss, and what the boss is doing, and you really have to be able to juggle those two views and make sure that you're not going to get... Uh, blasted out of the sky yeah. while you're trying to and, I, and, I'm, and I'm doing pretty good so far. I don't think I'm, you know, I'm thinking kind of rocking this. But, should I go ahead and beat it? Should I just go ahead and take it down? <laughs> He's just stalling right now. There's two ways of beating Andorosa. You can destroy his bottom cannon, or, if you're looking at the screen right now, if you go towards an opening, there's actually a spot where you can walk inside. Let me switch out real quick. And while you're swapping, um, I love your little dude here, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's fantastic. Yeah, these plushies, uh, they're, they're coming. They're coming. Eventually. <laughs> Let me go ahead and start it up. Okay, so I'm already in another part of the level, and the split technically is just where you can, you know, eventually be able to unlock the walker transformation later on in the game. And you can look right. back here. So, again, the game is made to be replayed over and over again, so you find these extra things. 
Uh, and it is so worth mentioning, um, a lot of these branching path options, uh, if you hear about one when you're playing the game and you're having a hard time finding it, it may be that you haven't progressed far enough in the storyline to unlock it. So it might be that you have to go a little bit further in the story and then come back and hunt for these special paths. But there are several different ones to find. And teleporters. teleporters. Hey, there's a that is so true. Like, when I was doing my first playthrough of the game, I'm like, how do I get to this one stage? I have no idea. So you beat the game once, and then you kind of go back, and then things will just kind of progress. It'll be, it'll be really good. Let's just go in. Like, take the jump. That, that's normal, right? Normal. This is, this is how it always works. Did too bad on this one, so let's go in here. So the teleporter. So when you go into these teleporters, the more you play through the game, you start to like kind of you know find these teleporter paths, and you'll be confronted with some pretty. <laughs> you know, some of them may be more intense difficult, some may be intense, <laughs> yeah. Some of them are intense, some of them aren't. They're just really funny, some of them are awesome. Uh, this you level. Have to, you have to find <laughs> so I think, uh, one of the Let me tell you about this level. Uh, when you start going through Star Fox here, was realizing that... This, this level is crazy hard. hard. At least the first time I played it. Whenever the first time I played it, this was so hard. Aqua Rosa, oh my gosh. Um, a little modified version of the, uh, the, red, the red enemy that we were finding before, Androsa. Definitely not the same. And... I won't go into very nasty attack there. Very nasty attack. Which I think you should just go for so we can you really show people what they're doing. Just like okay. I have okay. To <laughs> don't go in. It's a trap. What? It'll be okay. I don't. I don't know, dude. I mean, this is actually a pretty. This is a little bit later on in the game, technically a little. So I'm, I'm gonna still use my, you know, flying. But that's so cool looking. If, if I'm kind of sad that they just took away the um, the yeah, Wii U gamepad. You always have to have the Wii U gamepad on screen. This blue blast, I get pushed all the way back out. This is huge electromagnetic blast, really messes okay, with your ship. Okay, oh my you're... goodness, I got rocked. Okay, so to go through now what's go going through my head, yeah, I go, yeah, go find, yeah, easier said than done. So not only am I dodging these giant lasers and those missiles and people coming behind me, and I have to watch out on the TV for this. I mean, again, I'd it's like to see people on. beat it, but you know, I did beat it. I will say I did, because you can see my best time, time up there. It's 13360. <laughs> it's going to go. Okay, yeah, I should. I should get out. I think I'm far enough, though, from the dome. Yeah. <laughs> 13360. You know, I want to boot up my game right now and find out what my score was. But I'm really low on health also, so yay! We get to, uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and move on. Let's do that. Let's move on. Deal. This is good. I'm, I'm totally good moving on. I am completely in support of that. So I'm not sure if folks noticed while we were watching that last segment, but uh, as far as the information on the top of the screen there, uh, we did have the time, so you could see your best time, try to beat it, which can be really one, challenging one when you're starting to shave off portions of seconds off your complete time. But also a counter oh, that was telling yeah. you how much where you had to finish up to uh, to get to the end of it. Uh, and yes. there's some other different paths there where you've got some pretty time-sensitive missions you have to do, things like that where it really adds an extra layer of difficulty, I think. Yes. And then you got to try to get perfect score. So just throw that on top. I'm telling you, man, I really, I really want to see you guys. <laughs> Speedrunners, anyone? You guys, you guys <laughs> check it. I, I want to see this. I really do. Um, and another way, what's really great about this is, um, so we've also added in a co-op mode. And I want to show what the level's called, uh, Sector Alpha. And me and Sector are Alpha. So to tell you what's Good one. On, yes, we're going to be, yeah, I, I need you, man. I know. Give me a way to be great. <laughs> Thank you for, what a guy. Okay, good. So um, the way this works is I'm going to be flying. So I'm going to fly using the Wii U Pro Controller. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be flying using this. I'll be looking up at the TV. Let's take a look. Yeah, and today, if you guys... Yeah, yeah, he'll be aiming. Okay, bad. So, yeah, go ahead. Let's start this thing up. Uh, sure. So, uh, so me, I'm in control right now of the... Uh, of that That's pretty cool. I do like that functionality a lot. Shoot my own. I have, I have this kind of... If you see my kind of orange reticle, that's me. That green laser technically is Tade. So what, um, what I need to actually keep in track of... Again, you can play through the entire game in co-op if you wanted to. Um, and it does change things a little bit because I know that he has to aim and fire at stuff. So what I'm trying to do is not be so hectic with my motion. Now you can imagine when it goes into all range mode and there's other things to look at. That it's, I That's gotta be really to crazy. The dynamic down. between two people. I personally haven't tried co-op yet, but um, so feel free to tell me what you that would be cool. Or, or just Ooh. smack him if he's Are not you, going you, where you yeah, need to go. You're, you're close enough. <laughs> there are a couple things I really love about this road. Uh, First off is how interesting it's going to be from a scoring perspective. Because you can see up in the top corner of the screen there, we've got separate hit counters for the two of you. And once you find uh, a gunner or a pilot who you work with well, you get a real good sense of what's going on in the mission. And Wait, I didn't realize that. Okay. So you got two lasers that you can fire out. Incredible amount in the 
stages where there's a lot of activity going on. That is so cool! Okay, I... Like I said, I haven't tried co-op. But the fact that the orange laser is the pro controller and the green one is the Wii U gamepad, that's cool! This new generation of players who never had a chance to play Star Fox. Folks who... Maybe it'll be a little intimidated to play it right off the bat, but if you have a young niece or nephew, oh uh, younger person who is interested, but they're thinking maybe, I just want to fly the R-Wing, or I just want to handle the shooting part, I'll let somebody else fly. It's a great way for you to team up with them and give them a chance. That's to true. Experience. That is really true, especially if you got like someone younger. They can start where they feel most comfortable and then eventually get to the point where they're ready to take on all the controls themselves. Oh man, totally second on that too, absolutely. I, I second that so much. Uh, you got a bunch of young nieces and nephews, right? I do, I, I do have some nieces and nephews that I would love to, I mean, I'd love to play them. Uh, and it's interesting, whenever they got the, um, the laser upgrade, only one of them got the upgrade. Like, literally the gamepad got the twin lasers while he's still stuck with, uh, the singular lasers. That's interesting. I'm to see how everyone not reacted to, or how they reacted to not just the animated short, but how people also kind of, you know, they follow up with the game, they play through it and go, hey, there's a connection there. Like, I didn't know that they, like, for example, things about the universe that I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that they actually went through shoots like that to get into their, into, into the army. Right, that's what I was saying. Chances we've seen a lot of the behind the scenes hanging out. Yeah. When they're not on missions saving the LLS system. Right, they're playing with toy baby blocks? I didn't understand that. <laughs> like, who's playing with these baby colored blocks? That was weird. What did you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments right now. What did you guys think of the whole behind the scenes uh, aspect of the Star Fox short? I played was the SNES game. And I have all these incredible memories of my best friend in elementary school and I going to the grocery store and getting like bags of sour candy and then going to her place and playing it to like three or four in the morning. And did it's you like, guys, oh, new people. Did you guys like take turns and, and like, oh, yeah. did you guys like challenge each other with like, all right, you know, getting, <laughs> getting high scores. Something about the high score thing, something tells me that you guys are really doing that too. I'm sorry, because I'm going to do the same thing with my nephew. I'm really looking forward to giving him a chance to play Star Fox and so see what he thinks and, and watching him kind of build his own relationship with the series. Yeah, this level part is pretty cool because you get to go with the walker all throughout here and you get to infiltrate uh, this base. And you guys are getting a taste of that Wii U gamepad over there. It is so good. What he's saying, JC, is, is drive better. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I need, to, I need to get good. I need to get better. We'll get there here. I have an idea. So actually, I'd, I'd love for you guys to talk a bit more about what it feels like using the two different controllers and handling these two different roles because you're doing such different things right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess I'll speak to my part first. Like I'm like when I'm driving, I'm always thinking about Tade, but I'm also thinking about like okay, I can really keep my eye on defense because I can barrel roll um, at any point and to deflect shots, which I really can't really do that there. But <laughs> I can actually focus a little bit more on defense and kind of avoiding shots, whether I'm you know instead of having to defend myself and shoot at the same time. I can just focus on defense, so and I think longevity a lot to dodge. There is a lot to dodge. Sorry, I'm gonna have to dodge a little bit more. There you go. That's cool. And then if you double tap left, that's how you do a barrel barrel roll with the walker. And if you double tap right, that's how you do the opposite barrel roll. So it's pretty cool. It definitely helps out in certain situations. So it's really easy to help and yeah, support the balance. So good. Okay, we're even coming up on here. I, I also love the characters that operate this ship. You see chatter from them every once in a while, and they're just trying so hard to do their job and cash their paycheck from Andros, and here you are <laughs> blowing up all their stuff. That's right. Uh, isn't that what we're supposed to do? That's like, we're paid to, <laughs> we are paid to do this. Like, wow, like, it's oh, true. Hey. I mean, they, uh, they bring back a lot of older characters from Star Fox 64, uh, such as Cayman, and uh, some other characters. You guys, you guys played 64. You guys know. You guys will know. As soon as you see them or hear them, you'll be like, "Hey, I recognize that guy." Here you go. What if I just kept it kind of? I'll try and run. Actually, this is gonna be a little tougher. No, I can see. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna keep you stationary because. Dodge the blast. I'm dodging on the side. Is actually enough. Here, what if I just sat here and just like let you do it? Good job, Tade! <laughs> there you go, done. And they still keep the um, the hit bonuses correct. So if you beat the level fast, you'll get the hit plus 10. If you do it not so fast, you'll get a hit plus 5. And if you take your sweet time, you'll probably get like a hit 1. So uh, whenever you get the hit plus 10, you've done a good job. We get to show off Amiibo functionality now, right? Yes, 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 yes. Did somebody say Amiibo? Yes, 
have them at the ready. So we've got a fox and a falco ready we to go. Let's start with falco first. Oh, yeah. We have a little fox here. Yes, this is the Smash Brothers version. Yes, absolutely. I want like an, a release Star Fox Zero Falcos. Slippy Amiibo. And I want a Peppy Amiibo. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all the same. I want all of that. So bam, tapping on the Falco Amiibo for the Black R-Wing. Super cool. I'll tell you what, you see the Black R-Wing. Let me get into the level and I'll talk about it. So the Black R-Wing is kind of like a high risk, high reward kind of a ship. Um, the way it works is that uh, you have really, really powerful lasers, but you can only take so many shots. So less defense is a normal uh, R-Wing. Yeah, I think this is a really good option for folks who want to go real high difficulty. Oh, man. What I like to call the Black R Wing, I like to call it expert mode. So, um, literally, I've got an upload of me fighting every single boss with the Black R Wing. It's called All Boss Battles Expert Mode. And I also have a video of all of the Star Wolf battles in the Black R Wing. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> oh, man. It's so, so good. I had so much fun playing with the Black R-Wing because you really have to watch out for everything. Like, one hit will take a good third of your health or a good half of it. There's even certain hits in the game that will completely one-shot you as the Black R-Wing. It's so crazy. So you've got the super-powered ship, the rest of them are piloting their regular craft. Mm -hmm. Another thing I should want to draw attention to is, uh, I, you know, again, the accuracy of the animated short is so awesome. Uh, remember when Falco was messing around with the video game and he, like, totally lost until uh, Slippy gave him that upgraded headset? Know how I can lock on to two different items at once and shoot? That is, uh, that is new. Uh, they even put it in this game. Uh, so That's right. As a pro tip, uh, you can lock on to two different enemies in the regular R wing, but as long as you have fully charged lasers, or um, you, you to, sorry, fading fire, um, or you can use it in the black R wing, and you have it regardless. Uh, the moment you start it up, even if it's the oh, I have even more powerful lasers now. Oh, now, yeah. one of the things that when I was playing through the game. Um, Oh, yeah. When I was playing this level specifically, I realized that you shouldn't always lock on to your targets and fire that missile. You shouldn't always do that because you get bonus hits if you just shoot them down with a regular, and then as they're tumbling about to die, if you shoot them one more time, you'll get an additional hit. So you get two hits, two points, per one unit. Ooh, ouch. Stay tuned to my Star Wolf video, literally. Leon comes over here, and we're face to face, and I shoot him down, and he dies <laughs> within the first like five seconds. Oh, it's so good with the um, I had hyper lasers and I had the black R wing. It was so funny. And then I do something really funny to him while he's on the ground burning. It's quite hilarious. So you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to that. 4:22. That's when it comes out, right at midnight. Really cool to see. That would be pretty interesting. I would, I would like to see that again. Getting good. Getting skilled. Oh, I am. Man, who the heck? Come on, JC. Dude, you gotta, you gotta step it up, bro. Taking all these hits. If we leave the surprise for folks to find later, let's You know, I will leave the, 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 the giant surprise at the end for later. <laughs> the deck crash. I'll, I'll leave that for later. And see, as you can see, he's shooting the enemies, and then as they're tumbling, you can shoot them one more time for an additional hit. It really dawned on me. I played through the entire first time of the game, and I didn't realize that. So if you guys are going for those medals and the high scores, try to lay off the lock-on and focus on the intermediate shooting. No, but if I do, then, you know what, it's okay. 28. Almost there. Yeah, you got this, come on. 29. Should be 30. Not enough barrel rolling. Oh, great. Oh, he's coming to so, our party again? Yeah, he's coming to our party again. But you know what? I kind of don't want to show what happens afterwards. That's, that's good. Be, good. Yeah, because... Let that go for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not because I think that would give away at least who the boss of that level is. And I'd, that'd be really, really fun for you. Ooh, guys spoilers. They're avoiding spoilers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go on. Let's, right. move, let's move on. Let's do Fox and Evo. Ooh. Wait, thank you. Let me grab Fox here. All right. 
Ooh, there we so go, the Fox Amiibo, yep. ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Tapping that bad boy on there. So the retro R wing. So the retro R wing is yeah. so cool. I'm a long time fan of Star Fox. You remember the old school Star, like Super Nintendo Star Fox? This is what they look like. Yes, like that. <laughs> it's so the, 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 the design is just so sleek. I think it is stylish, uh, but I think what's interesting, you know, what's even more interesting to me is like. They kept certain functionalities the same, so it changes the way you play. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually hop back into uh, Corneria. And and good choice. Yeah, turn your audio up because the retro Arwen's audio is fantastic. It is, it's and really my favorite part is actually the lasers. They sampled a lot of the old school like sound effects. Like for example, even like right now, everyone flies these retro uh, retro Arwen. <laughs> That's so crazy looking. <laughs> you can actually play the entire game, game like this if you want. To. Yes, and uh, for those of you guys who don't know, this is actually <laughs> Corneria 2. This isn't Corneria 1. Um, something happens in the story, and you go back to Corneria again. not the same, exactly. You can't really say why. Why? It's a different Just, point in the story. Yes, I'll, I'll leave it at that. We'll be quiet. Yeah. Right, I didn't spoil uh, anything. So it, things are very different. <laughs> but this level is really fun. And, uh, oh, the other thing. A couple of really cool stuff about, the, uh, about this retro R-Wing. So you're shooting, you have like, you know, the single laser, it's all like low poly count, everything's really awesome. Uh, in addition to that, of course, we had to make it functional for the entire game. So we added walker yes. functionality. <laughs> so it's just, uh, <laughs> Look at this walker. It's, I love it, it looks it awesome. Really Look at it, how's it even keeping itself upright? It's it great. It really books it though, that thing's got some speed. Hey man, thank, uh, you gotta thank Slip. He's, he's making, he make, teamwork oh. makes a dream work. Oh, oh. we're good. Okay. <laughs> teamwork <laughs> makes a dream work. <laughs> I love the little like pixelating when it gets damaged too. Yeah, actually, if, if if you have enough uh, to go and, and hit something again real quick, we can show people the little sort of pixelated sure explosion that happens like, when you hit like stuff. Point. Yeah, right there. It's, <laughs> it's subtle. But it's there. Like it's awesome. That's true. That That's very true. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but as you're charging up your shot, oh, yeah, that's, right. that's so, the explosion uh, of the bomb, just the bomb first, in 64. So remember how I was like pressing and holding the ZR button and I had that lock-on thing? Notice how if I hold down the ZR button, there's no lock-on. Because... If you remember the Super Nintendo, that didn't exist. So you actually have to change the way you play because you have a different game mechanic you have to deal with now. So it's like, okay, I can't just lock on and crush all these things. I have to kind of manually aim it or just throw a bomb like that. That's uh, right. So they, yeah, those bombs, uh, you know, just hit the R button and it's super, super old school. Blowing stuff up, it's all pixelated at the bottom of the screen too. So, <laughs> dude, the details in this game. It's good. Back in our day, we didn't have I'm telling you, the details, I totally agree with you. <laughs> the development team did, did an awesome job with the details on this. We got this. Yeah, I, I just love the amount of detail they put into the visuals and the audio for the retro R wing. It's oh, this is very heartwarming. I know, right? <laughs> nostalgia. Reminds me of my brother and I. We were playing old school Star Fox. And you can see whenever you're uh, whenever you're at low health, you can also see the fact that like you're kind of flashing a little bit. And that's the same thing for the regular R-Wing, too. And those, those will kill you. These little saw things that come at you. If you're in the, um, if you're in the black R-Wing, if you don't destroy these things, and they saw right there, that's a one-hit KO, you're done. I remember I was playing this level with the black R-Wing, and I'm like, okay. I can do this. <laughs> uh, and then I get shot down. And you're gradually building up your your kind of stage memory for what's hiding where and where you can find the the best angle to hit a bunch of enemies at once. Because if you want to hit really good scores, you really have to memorize where everything's going to be coming at you because it's, it's coming by pretty quickly, and you have to make these decisions right away. Like, do I go down this path or that path? Am I going to go, you know, hunt down this power up right now? Or am I going to focus on taking out enemies? Nice. And Ooh. folks might notice those. Quadrupedal tanks have some neat green plates on their backs, which That's right. you can maybe do something with. You could do with? something with, yeah. <laughs> maybe, if, if you feel so inclined. I'll let someone figure that out. <laughs> you know, I haven't done that yet. I saw and noticed it, and I'm pretty sure that if you do it, you might get something good. So, uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty interesting. We've got um, a 3 of 30 counter up at the top of the screen, and if you manage to take down enough of the enemies in certain areas like this one within a certain amount of time, it is, uh, I'll say, in your best interest. So you have these extra little challenges that you're doing where on top of just progressing through uh, finding the boss, beating the boss, you're trying to hit these little benchmarks where uh, here can you take down uh, 30 of these enemies within a set amount of time. 
you keep focusing on like, the larger ones, I really should, just to get the counter up, I really should actually think about taking down the smaller There's ones. There's a lot of folks that can go higher up in the sky there. That is true. Here, I'm gonna see if I can... I mean, in his defense, it's really hard in That's this right, level to shoot down everything without being able to lock on. Because what I was, what I would do in this uh, situation is I would fly around, I'd lock on to something, I'd fire that shot, and then keep on shooting at other things until I'm able to lock on to something else. I do. Oh, looks like time is running and I see it being red. I think they're bailing. Yeah, I think it's going to be really fun for folks uh, once they've played this game, taking another look at the animated short, because there's so much about the lay of the land here. Um, that little segment that we took going over to uh, the teleporter on that first side mission we showed off, you could see that path in the animated short. And there's a lot of other stuff about the terrain that you can actually pick up by taking a look at through there. Mm -hmm. And stuff's going crazy. Yeah, stuff is, something is happening, and there's some kind of... Are they going to cut right here, or what? Buildings disappear. Yeah, that's not normal. Into terrifying teleporter portals. It's okay. Come on, Slip, tell me what's going on. Oh, that can't be good. Okay, so they're showing the boss. That's pretty cool. Design. I think this thing just looks so cool. It's just, it's so big and stompy. It's and so big and stompy. Big, oh. big and stompy. The giant mobile weapon, it's Gigorilla. Gorilla. Big stompy robots. <laughs> If you want to make me happy with a game, throw a big stompy robot in there, I'm in. <laughs> now, when I was playing with the Black Arwing against the Gigorilla, literally, it, I was having such a hard time. Because this move over here, you just have to keep on barrel rolling, and you can dodge every single one of them. But literally, one, like if you fly up close to him, he'll just go... Boom! And then hit you down, and literally that's like a two-hit KO. And uh, if you are actually the walker running in between his legs and coming off the other side, he'll literally stomp and give you a one-hit KO. It's over. Oh my gosh, he is so tough in the expert mode. He, it is fun to mess around with. But like right now, he'll shoot some missiles out of his back and kind of stand still for you. But uh, you can see those bases, like this base right here, uh, and let's see where else. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go right now. Oh come on! All right, so uh, he walks next to those bases that I pointed out. He literally will pick it up and launch it at you, and that's a one-hit KO. You're done. This is my favorite stages. So I'm just gonna kick this in here. This is uh good level omega. sector and omega that's one of my favorite stages too jc level watch can he get these gold rings though watch right oh, here yeah. left and right left okay. right yeah. oh my gosh Black nope are we this i think what, what makes it especially challenging besides the fact that you're maneuvering around all the and then there's the third one bam right there that is really hard to do you have to be precise in every single one of your movements there's no wasted time so there's no wasted out anything exactly when to get those Power ups exactly when to maneuver one okay, way or the okay, other okay. to shoot folks down. Okay. You got this. All right. You're good. Oh. Okay. That is so true. This level is super fun because you're going at high speeds. And uh, when I was playing this level in uh, expert mode with the Falco unlockable Black R Wing, literally one hit from any of these meteors will take you out. <laughs> so you can't miss anything. You can't skip a beat with this level. Hey, that's, a, that's an odd shape yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Oh, and these that's are really right. cool gates. Yeah, they're and these things will destroy you in one hit. At the temple that inspired Nimoto Sam when he first created Star Fox. It's cool that we have a callback here. That's right. Uh, that's been cool. Been there, right? Yes, I've been here. Uh, and it's really awesome because you know there's a ton of these red gates that kind of go up these steps, and you know uh, there's also like a statue of a you know a fox with a I think it's like a scarf on. I think there is. Um, so it's a really, really humbling place to be because you don't really well, sorry, think about <laughs> how many uh, gates there are until you're there and just like, dude, this is pretty, it's pretty awe-inspiring. You know, if you have ever chance to go to Japan. And if you look, you can see the Area 6 little satellites over here, just like uh, from the Star Fox 64. You can shoot all those down, which were super cool. And as soon as I saw them, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Area 6 from 64. That's so awesome. That's something where you actually get to see him walking through the shrine. Um, oh! In Sorry. Kyoto, so you can see exactly yeah. where the inspiration came from. Oh, careful, careful! Yep. And you know what I'm gonna do? 
after something this, happened. something happened, but I'm probably going to try and cut this short because there's a twist coming up that I actually don't want to. That's good. We yeah, there's a twist. Find I want twist. you guys to find the twist. I know. I don't want to sp no spoilers, but I'm trying to keep the spoilers to the minimum. Uh, so, yeah, so that was my favorite level. Uh, Except for, like, showing Gigorilla or anything like, like that. That's still cool. The, the Super Nintendo version of the game or Star Fox 64, that you'd recognize something at the end of that level. That's all, that's all I'll say. But it's just really like, oh, you put it in there. Um, yes, that's right. Got it. Okay, I remember what he's talking yeah, about now. You're gonna go ahead and swap games here for a second. So yeah. All right. I think for folks who haven't seen Star Fox Guard, we should probably start off just with a quick intro. What this game's all about. Yes. So Star Fox Guard, uh, you know, comes in the. It comes with Star Fox Zero, the physical version of it, and. Uh, Star Fox Guard is essentially a game where you are defending these kind of, I guess, like a mining installation or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a mining company. They're, they're they uh, and, they uh, mine they rare materials and metals. They've got bases all across the Lalat system. But for some reason, robots have started invading all of his bases. So he's hired you to uh, man his security stations. You get to control all these cameras that have uh, guns rigged to them. And you're trying to make sure that the robots don't actually destroy the base and they're amazing, amazing robots that you have to take out. So uh, you get more and more. Oh, hi. Sweet. Yeah, we got some, we got <laughs> we some got friends in here. Let's, yeah, let's get them in. Everybody in here. So it, again, you guys know what to do. So we're going we're gonna to play, actually, I'm just going to go over like the basics of kind of going through. Uh, That's so funny that just everyone populates. Hey, guys, what's right, happening? First, everyone has the preparation phase. So right now, um, if you want to take a look at the TV, that is all the 12... Whew, this game is too good. You'll see. I, I've got at least 10 episodes of me playing Star Fox Guard. And it's really scary. It's really scary. So think kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's kind of a deal, but like toned down. I mean, it's that kind of, like, scary that I have whenever I play Five Nights at Freddy's, because you got to switch from camera to camera and shoot things down, and, like, they're attacking, they're invading, and it's, like, oh my gosh, I get so nervous. So I can kind of move and take these cameras wherever I please and place them in, but you can also do this during the, uh, the actual yeah. game itself. And looking at the little icons that are there on the gamepad screen, those little gray spots are robots that are mm -hmm. going to be coming in, so you get a sense of where the robots are going to be coming from, but you don't know what kind of robots. Yeah, you know That's right, you don't know. You don't know when they're coming. You just know uh, that, you just know that they're, you know they're coming. I mean, you can see, like, on cam one right over there in the top corner, there's one, like, slowly approaching. And it's so scary, because you're, like, looking at cam one, and then, like, cam 12 or 11 will start having some guys, and you're like, oh, oh, I gotta go over there. <laughs> oh, my, it's so scary. But fun, too. Like, legit, it's fun. When you're guarding one of these bases is to protect that central tower. You can see it there on the gamepad screen. It's the glowing central unit at the core of the base. Uh, <laughs> These little robs. From a combat class robot, that's it. It's game over. So you've really got to make sure yeah. that no robots anybody, get to that spot. Anybody gets there, it's all totes and game over and stuff like that. So. And uh, there's two different kinds of robots. Uh, as I mentioned, combat class robots, the first type, they're the ones that can actually do damage to that central tower and get you a game over. There's another kind of robot, chaos class. Uh, they're the ones who are going to be messing with your defenses, uh, stealing your cameras, moving your cameras around, interfering as much as they can with your defenses so those combat class robots can get through. To finish a mission, all you have to do is take out the combat class robots, but if you want to get a really good score, ideally you want to be trying to take every robot off the That's map. right. Take them all out. Just oh, where? get oh, rid of them. Oh, sorry. There he is. Oh, there he is. Sorry. I almost <laughs> blanked out. I was like, <gasps> like yeah, I can't. He was like right hey, around the corner. So once you destroy all of the, um, you know, all of the ones that are going to attack the, uh, the tower, once you take all of those bots down, um, yeah, this guy, and I, oh my gosh. He's oh, Rebot. Cute. Rebot. <laughs> Again, the spelling for Rebot is R-E colon B-O-T. Rebot. And he's it? adorable. Get it? I love the sounds he makes when he's running around. Yeah, and he kind of, I don't know, he, you know, he kind of looks like a rice cooker that has like a part of a black <laughs> <laughs> Rice cooker. <laughs> no, he's in the shape of a frog, obviously. So what he's doing is collecting all the precious metals that were left behind by all the robots you destroyed, and that's what's going to contribute to your final score, and also going to contribute to unlocking some special stuff that you get as you progress through story mode in this game. So you want him to get filled with medals. Yes. That's right. Look at he that. Does. Perfect guard. What's good? <laughs> you do your flips, Rebot. I can just watch out those little bars. Yeah. Sing. <laughs> Sing. Sing, Rebot. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I swear, I really should. I, 
I there love are, Reba, I do. There are a few different models of Reba, too, that you'll see later on in the game. What? Yeah. Well, okay. Different right. models of Rebot? What? Oh, so what I'm doing here also is, you know, the whole the way the cycle works is, you know, you you, you defend the installation, you, you, know, you complete the mission, eventually you can level up. So the more medals you get, the, the higher your level gets. Now, the higher level gets, as you can see here, I went ahead and unlocked another mission. So you can also unlock different camera types in the left side. So again, get medals. Uh, extra missions, extra types of. You and know, actually, cameras. if you stay here for a second, sure. Looking at that next icon that's over to the right, you see the tiny little ribbon. There's a ribbon on his head. That ATK unit. That's a different kind of um, uh, uh, one of the extra missions. So special things that you can get to do. Got it. Oh, look at that. Little ribots. Right, so little ribots. Another mission, and this time I think we're gonna bring in the crew in the back and get everybody to yell at you. They're already so, here. They're here. Yes. They're, they're ready to go. So what's everyone doing there? Uh, yes. So <laughs> in other words, I remember I remember saying this during like like playing with the levels. I was like, hey, if you feel if you feel a little bit of stress, you're doing it right. So <laughs> exactly. I feel a lot of stress when I play this game. Even if you know if, if people aren't even familiar with uh, you know uh, the Star Fox uh, franchise, uh, you know it it's it's a lot of fun to just kind of get in and feel free to yell at your. And this is where you find out if you, if you trust the people behind you to give trust. you the right camera numbers trust. or... Trust. <laughs> Hear that? Trust. <laughs> they're going to yell. They're going to troll and watch. That's or right. if you just want to yell out random numbers. I mean, that's, that's another yes, that way to play. That's another way to troll. I'm just glad Bill's not here to do that. So, okay. So we're going to do another one. You're going to see another type of robot come in. As you play, you'll start to notice that the camera types evolve and the robots evolve. Speaking of which, I'm going to... Place another camera. This is my favorite spot to hit. Um, I'm going to select camera number eight, and I'm going to tap this, which is the lock-on camera. So I can lock. Lock-on on camera is really good. Button and they all go down. So um, I'm comfortable with where things are at, and I would like some help because I can't. There's there's quite a few robots in here, and it always is helpful. Trust me. So just if you see anything, yeah. You, you see something. <laughs> you see anything? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. One. Twelve. And there's a, a one there too. There's a one. Okay. One, <laughs> twelve. You're twelve. Thank you for coming in on four. Oh, coming in on four. The shield coming in on four. Oh, by the way, so yeah, you can't really hit these guys. The shield guys are so hard. So thank, thank you for telling me. So I'm putting another camera behind you him to do this. That's that's one way to do it. I'm sorry. What? Nine. Nine. Nine? Okay, thanks. Man, the shield guys will continuously look at your camera, so you have to go behind them. Or if you have the uh, the lock on. I need to get some other camera here. You could use the lock on in order to destroy them really easily. Do I have to? Yeah, it's fine. Fine, fine. fine. I, got, I got six. It's okay, one. One. Ah. Uh, I'm at two. Wait, no, I'm not done with one yet. Wait, come back here. Two, no, three, two. Five, dude. Twelve. Four. Five. Okay, fine. I got it. I got it. You guys. Oh, my gosh. He's about halfway done with the level. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna you. I'm not failing. Dude, he's sneaking yeah, past 11 yeah, over there. Oh, no, no, he's, he's, he's here. I got this. Camera 5. Well, Wait, but you said you can't say camera 5 too. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, we're good. We're, Dude, we're five's good. done. We're, whoa, whoa, we're gonna, we're gonna make it, guys. Ten? He's not gonna make it. Oh, that's, that's oh, get, he's getting, getting close. close. We got this. Oh, you're on the wrong See? side. It's oh, there fine. you go. Whoa. Lock nice. on camera helps. As long as you have lock on camera. Okay, you made it because of the lock on. Dude, that was so intense. Just watching. Man. Guys, for calling out the right numbers and not saying like, oh yeah, there's also something on five too. Camera thirteen. <laughs> yeah, my strategy is good. So we did good. We have more, more Rebot loving. Got tons of good stuff. That's really crazy. So when you guys are watching my episodes of Star Fox Guard, it's going to be pretty intense. You guys will see me screaming <laughs> towards the later levels. If you get a game over and you want to see exactly what happened and where things went wrong, you'll be able to see which of the robots was the one who made it through. That's true. I actually missed three of them. I, you know, I could have gotten technically another bonus if I got all of them, right? So again, yeah, next time. Next time. There's always a next time. Yeah, it, it's tough to get the perfect run on the game because, you know, you're so focused on attacking what's in front of you. So you have to pay attention to how many little attack bots are left. And then also looking at the bottom screen to see if there's any dots on screen that you can also pick off. They're a little bit of a surprise. I mean, you use the same kind of techniques and everything's pretty pretty familiar. But some much more destructive robots. Much more. They're not like little robots. They just kind of... Puts around and kind of walk. Again, I'm fine with this lock. I'm fine. Actually, you know what? Uh, I don't want the lock on. 
here and put the lock on there just in case. I don't want anything getting in. Lock on okay. is very so, good. Cue uh, alert. Come in and. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so they're showing the boss. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, this boss is. It took me a couple times to beat this boss, not gonna lie. The Hi Ho King. Um, he just wants to have a good time. Yeah, but I like winning. Oh. <laughs> See, he, gets, he gets to the base, I'm, I'm toast. To be fair, I'm kind of hoping we get a game over at some point, because the robots are really cute when they celebrate, and I kind of want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think JC's already played this level, so he's not going to get the game over, but when I first played it, it was super hard. Oh, wait, what? Oh, that's right. I have to, oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> so he does, yeah, as soon as... He kind of spits out these kind of like energy orbs of like red and blue and I kind of have to take it down. Oh wait, this doesn't look good. Wait, yeah, there we go. So he'll like start charging at you with his drill. And if he gets in close, he'll literally drill your base and it'll be game over. So just keep on shooting him in the eye. I didn't stop him. So now all those cameras are gone. Um, so, which is kind of weird because I think there's only one camera up there. I'll eventually get it back, but I'll have to replace it. But it, it is out of condition. Oh, gotta get these down. Don't fight. Don't fight those. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. And in most levels, cameras will reboot after a set amount of time. So if you wait long enough and you're able to hold out, that camera will come back. So oh, wait. wait for it to oh, wait, oh, wait, these guys. Uh, wait a minute. Caution for what? Uh, he's about to. No, no, no. That's no. so scary. So, something closer. No, wait, over here. The little robots who are parachuting in. If you are able to shoot the robot itself before the parachute lands, you'll take them out before they hit the ground. Unfortunately, if you hit the parachute, they'll drop immediately and start looking it for the oh, wait, they're also central tower. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, there's a few down shoot. on the ground. Yeah, you can see them if you guys look at that so Wii U gamepad. You can see yes. where they're moving, oh, and then yeah. you can kind of adjust accordingly. But then, if you're focusing on the little guys, you'll lose track of the big guy. Oh, no! Oh. Oh. Did I get him? I yeah, you got him. Oh, thank oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he was about to destroy him. That was, Good job, man. That was way more nerve-wracking than I was expecting. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. Oh, my God. Okay. So there is one more thing I'd like to do. Um, and that is I want to have a little fun and kick everybody out. So I'm going to make a custom map. And I'm going to have one of you guys. I won't tell, I'm, not, I'm just going to pick someone at random to challenge it. And then we'll just you'll cool. play my custom map. So can everyone please bail? <laughs> when you ask so nicely. Yes, Absolutely. please bail. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You guys, I don't want you guys seeing seeing my, my tech and my strategies, man. I got this. <laughs> it's just us. For the most part. I'm going to wait till they leave. JC, oh, that's oh, hilarious, oh. man. All right, let's see. Small can. Okay. So, okay. So everyone's out. So here's, uh, let, me, let me tell you what's going on. So there's another actual mode in the game uh, that you can, uh, let's skip this. Um, so there's a mode of the game called My Squad. Now the way it works is I'm going to build it here. So once you pass it, say, C, I, the last uh, mission before the boss, I played with C9. So I'm going to start up C9, and I'm going to go into My Squad. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, uh, you press the Y button. My Squad's really fun, by the way. In this particular, uh, what's it called? In this particular thing, uh, I am kind of making up my own wave of robots. So I get to, I get to be, you know, the bad guy, technically. So since I get to be the bad guy, uh, I guess it'll have a little fun. So, okay, good. You guys can see both the TV is at the top and then the uh, the gamepad's at the bottom. Now, here's the way it works. Um, I've kind of preemptively set up this kind of kind of this row of robots and these you know the way to the way to add and delete them. It's just pretty simple. If you want to see, I'll just do this. Um, if you want to add a robot, you simply tap the robot in the top right corner and you place it on the timeline somewhere. So I kind of place it in the bottom right. You can even pick up this robot and place it wherever you want. But you can only have so many robots in at once. You can't just flood all the entrances and exits. So say. That's right. Anyway, this whole um, this whole editor allows you to put a certain type of robot at a certain entrance. And then eventually, what you can see is if I take this kind of scrubbing tool, this um, you know this uh, little gold line here, I can scrub back and forth and watch the TV. I can see what you know what entrances they come in and come uh, you know what kind of paths they take. Some of them will get to the center. Some of them won't. But what I will say is, here's here's the reason why I put everything the way it is. Now, I want you to take a look at this. There are <laughs> He's got a plan. The actual room uh, for this entire facility. But what I did was, I noticed that the shortest distance is technically three and four. And I don't want to say it's two, that because outside the door. Um, what I did was, I really set up, um, the way to do this is, I purposefully set up 
entrance number four to to mess with people because entrance number four and six and five. I'm kind of I want people to get distracted and focus on four, six, and five. And then while they're distracted down there, notice the flood of people coming in at three. So what I'm doing is I'm purposefully setting up those. Tra I could even change like if I want. He's gonna destroy whoever plays this. Take any one of these robots and have like a longer path, a shorter path. But what I do is I'm picking specific paths so they kind of stagger and they all flow in. Look at how they're all kind of spaced out together. There's tanks coming in. There's enemies attacking from the right, but the, the majority is really number three. So. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I'm, I'm really curious to see if they can actually handle it because, you know, some of these tanks are going to take cameras down. Some of the enemies are really hard to get rid of. And so I'm banking on number three and number four to cause me the most problems. And I set the timing up in a way to do exactly that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit test on the gamepad in the bottom right hand corner. And I want to test the squad that we've created. And you can actually upload your squads online and other people can play them, which is pretty cool. Pick someone, right? Anyone? All right. Uh, I think we're pretty set, so let's get everyone back in. You guys want to come back in? <laughs> okay. Yeah, back. Hello, guys. Huh? Um, who should it be? Kind of wanted to be you. I kind of wanted to be you. See how I look back here and everyone's like not looking at me like, or they're getting nervous looks like, don't pick me. <laughs> don't pick me! Alright, I'll tell you what, since Sam, you're next to me, I'll go ahead and you can do this. So, there's, you there's your... how much I hate you? No, 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 no not at all. Sure. So, no. No, we're good, we're good, we're <laughs> fine, we're, we're totally good, we're totally good. Cool. So, please, um, have at it, there's your setup, there's your cameras, and you're ready to go, yeah, so... Yes, Sam, Sam. Will she make it? I don't think so. But uh, no, she is an expert. She is an expert. I think Sam can do it. Yeah, I decided to switch the camera. Um, this actually an option. Just to make it harder. <laughs> Last time I hit the star. I'm gonna root for her. So if you want up to be up and down to be down, instead of like you know the this same looks like, good. Star Fox Zero setup, you can do that. All right. Let's see what I got. Yay, Sam. I'm gonna go for you. You got this. You got, I have faith in you, Sam. Okay. Let's do this. You got it. She's oh, totally gonna beat it. Careful with four. Oh, don't you dare! Oh, I hate the tanks. No more tanks. Six. Yeah, if you see tanks, tell me about those first. Come on, disruptor. Ah. <laughs> She's totally gonna do it. She's got like probably the most experience out of everyone in the room, besides JC. Oh, that's pretty smart. Gonna destroy the camera. Oh, uh, it was the camera. Oh, six. Is it awful that I, I kind of still want to lose to get the dancing robots on screen? <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. You could on purpose. You can call it. Yep. Oh, also, you can see your little uh, emblem there on your bots. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Okay, no, I got this. We're good. We're going to do this. There we go. Use the lock on against the shield oh, dudes. Very smart. That was, that was huh. good. Use the I like that you call it smart instead of an act of desperation. It makes me sound like a planet. <laughs> oh, come here. No, no, no. And no. that's the last one. Totally. Oh, so close. Okay. Well done, Sam. It sounded like JC was like hyping this up, but I think that Sam has the experience with playing the game that she knows what she's doing. And let alone she got the perfect guard. Good job. Let's look at it again. Definitely. So, uh, while we're watching the robots destroy my base, uh, tell me a little bit about what you were thinking when you yeah, developed that monster. Yeah, so, I mean, as, as people know at home, you know, what I was trying to do was actually, like, kind of divert, because the shortest entrances to the center are, are, are on the side. I think it's three and four. Mm. So what I did was I tried to overload three and kind of kind of attack from the side just as a complete diversion, but overload three to make you get to look elsewhere and while you're handling those, have a bunch of really difficult bots sneak up on three and four come on in. more than one angle. So that didn't work because she was really fast. If you notice, she was like- That's right. She was just flipping and that's what you got to do with that. Like literally, like when I'm playing the game, oh man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. It's super hard because like I grabbed the stylus yeah. and <laughs> I've got like- this finger on the trigger, you can also trigger on this finger too, but you need to be able to, to tap on which camera you want to jump over to. So literally, it, 
squat, and they're gonna take. If you have a good left trigger finger. If you have a good left trigger finger, you'd be set. That way, you can just kind of point, move around, shoot. I oftentimes yell at my left index finger. I say, "Get good already." <laughs> Yeah, the up in the there, oh, it's it's so um, crazy! So Literally, here, just mm -hmm. tapping right. and then trigger. Take a look at the replay. So, so you can see what the last spot or where it got you from. Oh, there you can see them all dancing too. Look at those old guys waving his shield like he's. <laughs> and uh, this is handy for a couple of reasons. For me as a player, I can look and see where I messed up, where I need to beef up my defenses or change my camera positioning. But for you as the squad's creator, uh, if we're playing online, you get a record of me beating your squad. You can take a look at exactly what I did and then fix it up if you wanted to make it even harder. If That's a cool multiplayer function. Gotta gotta admit that. That's awesome. Go say, okay, I'm just gonna pile a whole bunch more of this kind of robot on this entrance, switch it up, but I'm really interested to see what people do here when they keep evolving their squads and keep improving them. You know, that is that is actually a thing I'm really looking forward to also. You know, as you start to learn more and more about how to like you know, stagger entrances and like find out what works in certain maps or certain type of robots that come from certain entrances and why it's difficult for people to deal with depending on where they have their cameras. Like, as you start learning, you start figuring out like, oh, okay. And the reason why you get to see this is because when you go back to, you know, uh, where you've set up your map, they'll give you an update. You'll get notifications. I'll tell you like, all right, this person won, this person lost. And then you can see like where they lost who they, or like, yeah. you know, if they lost to what. And then you can kind of keep changing it. Uh, speaking of which, uh, since you guys saw my level, um, what I did was I went ahead and made the exact same level and I wanted to make sure I shared it with you guys. So here is my custom stage. So if you want to try it for yourself in two days, go ahead and type in that code um, and you can access my level and you can, you know, I'll, I'll be looking forward to see what you guys do. Or if you want to mimic it, mimic it, change it, send it back to me. That's I'll cool. To That's cool. So on all of my episodes, um, you'll see exactly what my stage code is for Corneria, for the next level, and the next level. Um, it'll all be in the description, so if you guys want to battle mine too, feel free. But that's cool. I can't wait to try out JC's level. But that's probably all the time we have for today. I think we have to get out of here. I think we're done. We got for today. Yeah, for today. Um, but folks watching, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really hope you enjoy the animated short and the content we showed today. If you're interested in these games, they come out in a couple days, but you could get a lot of information about them. Uh, just hit starfox0.nintendo.com and we've got info about both the games. And here in our region, you're going to be able to get everything in one box. You can also buy the games digitally. And regardless of whether or not you buy this packaged bundle or the games digitally, same price, so you're not going to pay... Uh, any more if you want to get them one way versus the other. So whichever floats your boat, um, hopefully you'll give it a try and enjoy it. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. That's cool. That was really fun. Great job, you two or three or everyone in the room. That was awesome. Okay, so, yeah, we went on through. Um... And we saw that animated short, which was really fun and enjoyable. I totally love the animated short. That was fun. Um, we got to see some Star Fox Zero gameplay with some commentary from them. I kind of threw in my two cents for the things that they weren't covering. And we saw some Star Fox Guard gameplay. So, like I said, it's going to be super awesome. I can't wait. I've been holding all of this footage for like a couple weeks now, but at midnight on the 22nd, right as the 21st heads into the 22nd, right over that time, you guys will have at least 33 episodes of Star Fox Zero for you guys to go through. Uh, like I told you guys before, it's gonna be Star Fox Zero Choose Your Own Adventure, meaning you get to choose what path you get to go on and you guys get to watch me go through and play each one of those paths. In the episodes, there's going to be every single map, every single alternate route, every single completion, everything about the game with dual gamepad capture. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to show it to you guys. It's only a couple days away. And at the same time, we do have the sister game, which is going to be Star Fox Guard. I've got a couple episodes of that ready for you. I just can't wait. I mean, Star Fox Zero has been one of my favorite Wii U titles, hands down. Hands down. The incorporation of the Wii U gamepad, just everything about it is super cool. So I want to say thanks to each one of you guys who stuck around since the very beginning. You guys are great. For those of you guys uh, who are just joining in, 
awesome. Thank you for coming. And uh, all the links are going to be in the description for all that fun stuff. And of course, there's going to be some annotations on screen, some little eye in the corner that you guys can click on, the YouTube cards if you're watching on mobile. So yeah, all that stuff is going to be ready. The playlist is ready. It's just waiting for embargo to break and boom, it's going to be so cool. So I really wish that you guys would go out, get the gameplay along with me, send me your scores, send me your codes for Star Fox Guard. And of course, we'll go through and play this all together. It's going to be excellent. I can't wait. I really, truly can't wait. So that's going to be it for me today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Get pumped up for Star Fox Zero, the amiibo functionality, just everything about this game is so good. I can't stress that enough. I'm not just saying that because Nintendo hooked me up with a review copy. I'm not just saying that. Legitimately, as a kid who grew up with Star Fox 64 and played every single iteration, this is so true to what the series is, it is all about. So anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys on um, the 22nd when my Star Fox Choose Your Own Adventure Let's Play gets released. It's going to be so cool. Stay tuned. It'll be great. Get the game and play along with me. There's a link in the description where you can go through and uh, get that from Amazon. Do it. We'll see you guys later.